The latest from Porsche. The German sports car maker pulled out all the stops with this latest incarnation of the legendary 911. Former rally driver Walter Rural says the new car is not an evolution, but a revolution. That may seem hard to believe at first glance. The new 911 shape is the same as ever. But a closer look reveals that the car has grown. The wheelbase is 10 centimeters longer. The front track is wider. The rear window is larger. And there's no apparent engine compartment. When you open the rear cover, the only things that hint at an engine are the oil and window washer fluid caps. Inside, the central console rises steeply, much like in the 911's big brother, the Panamera, and a careful inspection reveals one detail that may not please every driver. Rule says if there's one thing he misses in the car, it's the manual parking brake. That's something a sports-oriented driver like him likes to have. And sporty driving is what the 911 is all about. This is the seventh generation of the famous Porsche, but it hasn't lost any of the genes that make the 911 a purebred sports car whether with Porsche's dual-clutch transmission or the company's new seven-speed manual. So far, it was the dual-clutch transmission with its seventh gear that offered the better fuel efficiency, but now people who want to shift manually can also enjoy the savings you get with that gear, which reduces engine speed by 19%. The new 911 manages to combine high performance with modest fuel consumption. The 3.4 liter engine produces 257 kilowatts, but needs just nine liters of fuel for 100 kilometers. And with the dual clutch transmission, fuel consumption drops to 8.2 liters for 100 kilometers. The rural notes that the car has gotten faster too. It can finish on lap at the Nürburgring racetrack 14 seconds faster than its predecessor, an improvement that Porsche has never before achieved with a new model. At the same time, the car is much more comfortable, and it's that combination of performance and comfort that is what sets Porsche apart. The 911 sporty aspirations are clearly evident in the cockpit. Pneumatically adjustable bucket seats, a big color display, attractive chrome and leather appointments. And lots of buttons and controls. In addition to the 3.4 liter flat six, the car can also be had with a 3.8 liter engine. It generates 294 kilowatts and enables the car to sprint from zero to 100 in just four and a half seconds. Porsche chose California for the new 911's official premiere. Porsche's Wolfgang Hart says California is the company's most important U.S. market. Porsche has sold more than 270,000 911s in the U.S. in the last 40 years. So it made sense to introduce the car in California. In Germany, prices for the new 911 start at about 88,000 euros.
The top three German high-performance car makers are Mercedes, Audi, and BMW. And that's the way it's been for many years. Every so often, one of the manufacturers decides to jostle for the very top position and brings out a car that's more comfortable and faster. But fuel economy is playing an ever greater role, and modern executive class diesel cars now have a similar fuel consumption rate to much smaller vehicles. The car maker that puts the biggest emphasis on fuel economy is Mercedes. Its E-Class comes in a seven-speed automatic version with a four-cylinder motor. Its performance is similar to the six-cylinder versions of its rivals at 150 kilowatts. It takes slightly longer to reach 100 kilometers an hour, but it does have the fastest top speed. In our test, the Mercedes consumed 6.6 .6 liters of diesel over 100 kilometers. There is one drawback to the Mercedes. Its rather loud engine jars with what is otherwise a calm and comfortable car. A luxury vehicle in this class usually strikes a very different note, but it does come with one important comfort. Dennis Paterman says Mercedes cars are primarily about space as they are often the roomiest. No matter whether you're behind the steering wheel or a passenger in the back, you always have enough leg room. Even a Mercedes trunk is the biggest. If space is your priority, then this Mercedes is the car for you. But the best thing about the Mercedes E-Class is its price. In Germany, it costs 48,000 euros and is the cheapest car in our test. The BMW 5 Series is the sportiest car in the test. And if you just focus on its performance, that's true. Its six-cylinder diesel engine is the biggest, and with 160 kilowatts, it can speed from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just seven seconds, giving it the best acceleration. But when it comes to top speed, it's beaten, when only slightly by the Mercedes. Its fuel consumption rate of 7.2 liters is very respectable. If you're trying to judge how good the BMW is, you just need to get behind the wheel and put your foot to the gas pedal. It has the quickest acceleration and the best brakes. It's the most agile and it doesn't use the most fuel. If it was the cheapest car, it would be almost perfect. The 525D version is the best compromise between comfort and speed, and it lands in the middle in terms of price. But in Germany, it sells for 50,800 euros, which means it's still a hefty outlay for the average motorist. Audi has the reputation for making cars with the best balance between performance, comfort, and price. Its new A6 is the only car in our test that comes with a stepless transmission, which the car maker brands as Multitronic. It's also the only front wheel drive car. That does not necessarily make for a sporty car, but it is more comfortable and quieter. Just like the Mercedes, Audi's A6 packs 150 kilowatts, thanks to its six-cylinder, three-liter motor. It also accelerates like the Mercedes, but the drawback is its fuel consumption. In our test, it needed over one liter more than the Mercedes and a half liter more than the BMW. The Audi A6 is the newest car in this test, although you wouldn't think that by looking at it. That's because Audi did not alter its design so much because its predecessor was so well received. When you look beyond its exterior, you notice it does well in terms of comfort and performance. It's always among the leaders in its class, and it doesn't have much in terms of weaknesses, except when it comes to driving dynamics. It's the only car with front-wheel drive in this test, and surprisingly, it's the most expensive. That's because Xenon lights and air suspension are included in the price. The new Audi A6 loses points because of its handling and high price. At 51,100 euros in Germany, this version is the priciest car in the test. The Mercedes E-Class nudges the A6 out due to its good combination of cost and performance. But BMW's 525D is the winner thanks to its perfect harmony of sportiness and comfort attributes a high-performance car needs to be considered the best. Opel has launched a new three-door version of its hugely popular Astra model, dubbing it GTC. The new car is more a sports coupe than small family car, 
borrowing only the aerial door handles and wing mirrors from the classic version. It also has a far flatter body and a more deeply contoured shoulder line at the rear. Prices in Germany start at 19,900 euros. Seat presents its new pocket rocket, the Mi. You don't need to have eagle eyes to see it's based on the new Up from Volkswagen. The Mi is powered by two all-new three-cylinder engines ranging in output from 44 to 55 kilowatts. Seat will be introducing a natural gas version next year. The new model goes on sale in the maker's native Spain in December, with the rest of Europe following in the spring. Hard to believe that these guys are just doing some test riding. Here at BMW's Enduro Park in Bavaria, Husqvarna Motorcycles is presenting an ABS device specially designed for off-road biking. Industry critics have flocked here to check out the little wheel-mounted innovation in action. Otherwise, the bikes look just the same. What makes off-road ABS so special is that you can deactivate it for the rear wheel. That means you can carry on steering with the front wheel. The rider doesn't have to worry about engaging the front brakes, says BMW engineer Jörg Ploss. All he needs to do is concentrate on where he's going, and if he approaches stones or other obstacles, he can evade them safely by applying the front brake. That's the big advantage. Um diesen Hindernis auszuweichen, aber er kann immer bedenkenlos vorne reinbremsen. Das ist der Riesenvorteil. The new off-road ABS was installed in 10 Husqvarna TE449 prototypes. Ten more bikes without ABS were also made available, so that the journalists could compare. The engines are slightly modified BMW units. Husqvarna was acquired by BMW Motorrad in 2007, but is still run as an independent brand. Enduro Park is a popular destination among off-road enthusiasts. Around 2,000 riders come here every year. Among them is Gerhard Forster, a regular contender in rally races like the Romaniacs. He's been on the scene for over 30 years, and as you can see, he revels in the benefits provided by Hustvana's ABS. Locking the rear wheel slows down the bike while still enabling the rider to stay in control. This is crucial when it comes to steep descents that end in turns. It's very practical for this kind of descent. There is a tight corner below, and this means that any rider, including amateurs, can engage the ABS and concentrate on the corner. The brake works perfectly. Introducing Andreas Lettenbichler. He's another star of the off-road scene and features regularly at the world's highest profile extreme endurance rallies. Seems to have been primarily designed for ambitious amateur riders. It's a first step on the road to ABS, which is good. It gives you far greater safety. Amateur riders have different braking distances. Even if you slam on the brakes when doing 50 or 60, you've got your straight line. You don't have that without ABS. The safety factor is perfect. Forty journalists have come here from across Europe, and they're just itching for a chance to put down their pens, put on the gloves, and do some serious cross-country. But does the ABS system work for professional racing? It isn't yet suitable for professional purposes, assesses Andreas Lettenbichler. It needs adjusting. He has no idea. That's the engineer's job. But in the not-too-distant future, he's sure there'll be something that can be deployed for the professionals. Time for a brief break. The TE449 can only tank up 8.5 liters of fuel. BMW was the first manufacturer to offer ABS systems for motorbikes. 
Over the years, they've gotten smaller, of course, but the systems on show here are only available in road-going bikes. So what do the media make of it? Journalist Ingo Gach is very impressed with the efficiency and functionality. The front wheel can no longer lock up, and that's a major advantage in a range of situations. Husqvarna has not yet revealed when it will be launching its dedicated off-road ABS, or if it will be going into volume production, but amateur riders can start warming up their engines. Christoph Bauer is at Volkswagen's Autostadt complex, eager to test drive a milestone in automotive history. He finds what he's looking for at a special exhibition honoring the legendary engineering company, Ital Design. Christoph picks out the Volkswagen Scirocco Coupe, created by Ital Design founder Giorgio Giugiaro. Around half a million units of the first edition were built between 1974 and 1980. For VW, the Scirocco marked the dawn of a new era. In the late 1960s, notes Christoph, all VW models, especially the Beetle, were starting to become outdated. So Volkswagen decided to blow away the cobwebs by introducing two new wins. The one was the not quite so powerful but very solid Passat, meaning trade wind. It came out in 1973. And then there was the hotter and sometimes also stormier wind, the Scirocco. And the Italian design stallion Scirocco duly went down a storm on its launch. Critics praised it as the first genuinely sporty car in Volkswagen's history. The VW Porsche 914, which came out several years earlier, must have slipped their minds. The Scirocco was put together by German coach builders Carmen, which became a tradition. The Scirocco was kind of a successor to the Carmen Ghia, although the only thing they really had in common was perhaps the combination of Italian design and German engineering. Otherwise, it marked a break with all VW traditions. No rear engine, no rear wheel drive, no air cooling, instead a water-cooled front engine and front wheel drive. The similarity to the Golf and Passat is unmistakable, with the classic 70s style Volkswagen features proudly on display. The alloy rims and abrupt drop-off at the back simply ooze sportiness. Plus, there was a large trunk. Tartan-style seats and a plastic dashboard will have people now in the mid-30s getting all nostalgic. That's what cool dads used to drive. The 1.5-liter four-cylinder engine in the Scirocco GT delivers a growling 70 horsepower. And who designed it? Giorgio Giugiaro, explains our test driver. The Italian designer created VW's entire new model family in the early 70s. The Passat, the Golf, and the Scirocco. And the form vocabulary with the bold lines and wedge shape, back then that was very much in vogue. Bella Machina, made in Germany. And what really stands out about the Scirocco, of course, is the color, viper green. And in combination with the green tartan seats, it's a beauty to behold. Plus, it's still state-of-the-art. That viper green is back with the new Scirocco. Das gibt's auch wieder beim aktuellen, beim neuen Scirocco. The Scirocco still has its street cred, no question. The Italian crafted body fits like a glove, and the workmanship and price to performance are typically for a German car very impressive. But what about the feel at the wheel? Front-wheel drive and four cylinders don't exactly sound like dynamite. The advertising for the Scirocco always stressed its performance. It took some convincing to market a sports car feel with front-wheel drive, but eventually people got it. Christoph read a test report from back in the day. The Scirocco even beat out the Opel Manta and Ford Capri. What set the Scirocco apart from the field was its responsive engines and excellent suspension. Reviews at the time called it one of the best handling cars around. Scirocco, ein 
Spongebob Trophäe in Westbaum. And it really does have a sporty feel. Christoph highlights the powerful engine, it's light, and above all has a pretty cool sound. The concept of a cool VW was still hard to swallow in the early 1970s. The Passat, developed by Audi, likewise had a struggle to shed its conservative image. But the defining tuning point came with the Scirocco and the Golf, launched soon afterwards. The Scirocco was the first modern Volkswagen developed by VW itself, but what makes it so special is the sum of its parts. Sportiness, great value for money, modern engineering, and of course, its exciting design. It's indisputably a landmark in automotive history. The Scirocco showed that a front-wheel drive car could still be a joy to drive. In doing so, it paved the way for an entire generation. The Golf Generation.